He follows the classic workout split. So what are my thoughts on Bradley Martin's split? No equipment, no meal plan, no workout plan, escapade and sick the week of my powerlifting competition. Eating salt and vinegar chips. That's all I got and some Gatorade. Let's see what Bradley Martin can do for me. <laughs> Bradley Martin is a fitness influencer, entrepreneur, and bodybuilder, but many of you might know him from his introduction to the Nelk Boys. I'd like to think that me and Bradley Martin are pretty similar. We both started working out when we were 15, we're both 6'3". He's 250 pounds, with arms measuring 18 inches, and an estimated bench press of like 450, a squat of 585, which isn't necessarily his PR, it's just the highest I could find on the internet, and a strapless, beltless, drug oh not that part, deadlift of 675 pounds. I was impressed. So if my powerlifting competition right around the corner, I thought I'd study Brad's diet, supplements, and workout regimen so I can maybe be a little bit like him and hit 1,700 pounds in total across his bench squat and deadlift and win my junior men's local classic in Hamilton, Ontario <laughs> with a world record. So what's the secret to Brad's success other than a ton of drugs? He wakes up and doesn't eat right away. He goes to the gym for a fasted workout and supplements it with his own Origins pre-workout. Strawberry mojito? <laughs> Really? Once jacked up on caffeine, he follows the classic workout split. Or bro split, whatever it's called. With chest on Mondays. Oh, thank God. Back on Tuesdays. Shoulders on Wednesdays. Legs on Thursdays. Legs once a week, I love it. And arms on Friday. Brad is a firm believer in cheat days and takes the weekends off, and we both know why. Now what about his diet? Brad mucks salmon, eggs, and whole wheat toast. For breakfast? This dude, this dude eats salmon for breakfast, bro. For lunch, he'll eat bison burgers and flat steak. <laughs> a slightly worse version of the two of those things, but I can get down with it. And for dinner, he eats even more fish. Wow, Brad, you've really, you've really outdone yourself with this diet. Uh, and he uses almond milk for his protein shakes, not oat milk. I, I know I sound like a yoga mom right now, but if you know the difference, you know the difference, and it exists. Now let's talk about the drugs. I mean, supplements that Bradley takes with his diet. First, we've got the classic whey protein. Yep, we got that. Then we've got creatine, perfect. Multivitamins, of course. And last but not least, BCAAs. B BCAAs? It's that, I'm not really big on pills. People who consumed a drink with six grams of BCAAs after the resistance workout had a 33% greater increase in muscle protein synthesis compared to those who consumed, okay, 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 okay. Where, where do I get this? Amazon? And that's it, with Bradley Martin's help, let's see if we can win this powerlifting competition to the grocery store. So Bradley's diet's pretty simple. He sticks to whole foods like fruits and vegetables and gets his protein in with eggs and meat. Now it's time to work out. Brad likes to aim for between 75 and 80% of his one at max. Same day. For only about twenty sets total. With only sixty second guys. Makes a statement to be done in one hour. That's what I love about it. Who says bro after every sentence, bro? He's definitely not looking around the gym post workout to find the best lighting for his pump flicks. That's who this split is designed for. In fact, if I had to sum up this entire split in one word, it would be pump. I've never done the classic split before, but my trainer has said it's best for hypertrophy. But honestly, the best part about it is the fact that it's fast, 
fun and certainly gets you sore the next day because you can focus on individual muscle groups. This isn't a science-backed workout based on theories and optimal balances and shit. It's just fun. Unfortunately, though, the very cultural of this split makes me want to cheat up the weight and kind of throw the form out the window. But if you're looking for more pragmatic routines, check out these two great review videos on screen. If you like push-pull legs, you have to try this one. Alright, let's start with the chest day. If you're not getting sore after chest day, this will do the trick. Like, just take a look at it. Don't you wish chest day was every day? Well, except can someone explain how to do weighted push-ups? I feel like an idiot trying to put weight on my back. Next is the back day. The best part about this day is it straight up takes like 30 minutes. 16 sets total without the use of supersets. <laughs> Best return on investment of any back day I've ever done, ever. And then day three is shoulders, and this is where the split kind of gets, as Kyle would say, dust. Not horrible, but hear me out. I usually only get 15 sets for the big muscle groups, but Brad hits 25 for shoulders. Five exercises, five sets each. And not just your typical eight to 12 reps, I'm talking like 12 reps, 15 reps, 20 reps, 25 reps, which isn't necessarily a problem, but it's worth noting. The reason I say it's pretty dust is because of this. Front raises. Come on, Brad. Barbell, front raises, come on, Brad. If you didn't know, one of the most overdeveloped muscles are people's front delts, and the least being the rear delts. This is not needed because this, 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 and this all hit front delts. I also do not understand ever working your traps. Why, why hit traps? What, what, why do you want a big ass neck? Other than that, I totally understand the shoulder day starting with a heavy compound to 15 reps for some reason, and then working your front delt, the side delt, and then rear delt. Thursdays is for your legs. Dear God, I don't even think I could actually talk about this routine right now. My knees, man. I need a minute. Other than Obi Vincent's leg day, this is by far the hardest leg day I've ever done. Until Dwayne The Rock Johnson's came out of nowhere and absolutely destroyed me. <laughs> Let's just leave it at that. The lights are flickering and I'm seeing scary monsters. Die, fly. But I do have to admit, I did switch to lunges for split squats all of the time. I'm sorry, I just absolutely hate lunges. The arm day is great. I give it a 7 out of 10. It starts with a close grip bench, best tricep exercise, I will die on that hill. And then a dumbbell bicep curl, which you can easily superset on the same bench you did your close grip bench press with and look like a fucking beast. Like every exercise in this routine. I didn't know how to properly seated cable curl, so I played around with it. Just don't do it this way, it'll absolutely destroy your elbows. Then, this is where it drops to a 7 out of 10. Barbell curls with a straight bar. Easy bar over straight bar any day of the millennium. And then the throwback workout, the tricep press. Damn, this workout should be on a Thursday. That shit brought me back to my like very beginning workout days. And then of course on weekends, Brad likes to rest, cheat, and party. Final week of this Bradley Martin challenge and it's the week of my powerlifting competition and I just went and did this the past weekend and now I feel like this. No equipment, no meal plan, no workout plan, escapade and sick the week of my powerlifting competition. Let's see what Bradley Martin can do for me. So I'm competing in the 93 kilogram weight class meaning I need to weigh in at less than 205.1 pounds and after eating a typical Bradley Martin dinner the night before, it looks like I'll be good because I'm going to lose some water weight overnight. <laughs> So you gotta, no. <laughs> I really gotta get these Air Forces framed. I almost got disqualified for wearing the wrong underwear. I'm eating salt vinegar chips. That's all I got and some Gatorade. But other than that, I'm feeling pretty good. I know what I need. People ask how I stay in such good shape. I just say I work out my Air Force and eat some more intro. Time to warm up. It's a great way to use editing to make something that was actually highly embarrassing, my first powerlifting meet, look, you know, somewhat cool. This is what actually happened. 
So this is my first attempt on a squat. The crowd is way quieter when I go up because everyone's like, who the hell is this guy? I'm feeling way too good off the Lay's chips and gummy bears and 315 actually goes pretty well. Despite the depth being an absolute hair follicle away from not qualifying. And then I leave the wrong way and uh, I'm feeling great. And I say something like, let's go for 365 on the next one. And then here comes the 365 attempt. I am actually extremely nervous in this moment because I haven't squatted this in like months, dude. I swear to God, since like 2022. I didn't even do a month mock meat man so 365 i mean if you're a typical gym goer that's like really impressive but for this meat like i'm just <laughs> fucking around man this is not deep enough clearly uh the girl on the right gave me a yellow at first but it was obviously not deep enough so i don't really know how it works exactly still to this day but and then for the third attempt i decided i'm gonna go even higher even though i failed the previous because i felt as though the weight was moving pretty well so clearly this wasn't the smartest decision and clearly i need more training in the squat department before my next meet but it was still very fun regardless let's move on to the bench press so if you're familiar with my channel, you know that I'm a big fan of the bench press. In fact, I'm quite proud of my bench press strength. So this was arguably more embarrassing than the squat because I kept messing up the commands. I think on the first one, I forgot to wait for them to say start. But then the second one, I forgot to, to wait for them to say re-rack. And then on the last one, I finally got it up. But it was like two plates worth of weight, which is so easy for me. So I know I could have gone higher. It's unfortunate, but anyways, that's how the bench went. Let's see how the deadlift went. So here you guys are witnessing me learn in real time the importance of chalk, switch grip, hand position, etc. And the flood of shorts talking about grip strength and all the other intricacies of a heavy deadlift that came after this powerlifting meet. You now understand why. Well, that sucked. But you know what? I'm not even phased at all because only one thing is running through my mind at this moment. It is I'll be back because that shit pissed me off. I fucking needed that. So I actually ended up weighing in at 205.4 to happily compete with the 230 pound group.